I also thank to, to the organizers to organize this very interesting workshop. Unfortunately, being on vacation, I was able only to see a couple of talks, but uh, I definitely am going to see the uh, videos that are recorded. Um, I also want to apologize that I'm going to talk about very old stuff, but uh, uh, the uh, instructions were that uh, I should talk about uh, Gödel incompleteness theorem and um, my recent work. Uh, also, everything is somehow connected with completeness, incompleteness is uh, uh, not so much close to it and it's, uh, it's more technical. So let me uh, present you some uh, old results about uh, incompleteness theorem. Uh, basically, uh, I would like to talk about strengthenings of the second incompleteness theorem uh, and uh, the way how these can be proved and what kind of these uh, results one can show and uh, also the relation to, to very weak theories. Uh, I need some preliminaries. Uh, uh, I will always assume that uh, T uh, denotes uh, a computably axiomatized, but uh, sometimes even, say, polynomial time uh, uh, axiomatized uh, theory that contains or interprets uh, Robinson's arithmetic Q. Uh, let me just uh, recall that the first incompleteness theorem says that all such theories are incomplete. Uh, and uh, of course, everybody knows this proof, but uh, I, I need to uh, show this uh, uh, simple argument uh, here because uh, it will later be uh, adapted to, to other situations. So the argument is that uh, uh, one states a self-reference sentence that says that uh, uh, the sentence is not uh, provable and the sentence is uh, equivalent to, to this uh, fact. Uh, uh, here, uh, these, uh, 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 what is it called, square brackets uh, denote uh, the formalization of, of the uh, formula, which means it's a, it's a numeral that uh, uh, represents the Gödel number of uh, formula uh, phi, and uh, PR is the is some uh, formula representing probability in T, uh, and we assume that it's a sigma one formula. The second incompleteness theorem says that uh, the consistency of T, uh, which can be expressed, uh, for instance, as uh, unprovability of uh, 0 equals 1, is not provable. And uh, this, uh, uh, this theorem requires uh, some conditions on, on the theory T. And this will be also the topic I will address, what are these conditions. Uh, the second incompleteness theorem, very roughly, it can be proved by formalizing the, the first incompleteness theorem. Because the first incompleteness, in the proof in the first incompleteness theory uh, theorem, we just show that if T is consistent, then this diagonal sentence gamma T is not provable. Uh, therefore, if we formalize it in T, we prove that the consistency of T uh, implies unprovability of gamma t. And since gamma t is equivalent to unprovability of uh, uh, gamma t, it's just gamma t. Uh, so uh, once we prove this, and having the, the first incompleteness theorem, we get the second incompleteness theorem, because if gamma t is unprovable, then conti also has to be unprovable. And the first question is, does the second incompleteness hold for weak theories? Uh, 
usually we assume that uh, the theory is strong enough to formalize the syntax in such a way that uh, uh, all uh, it has uh, uh, the, the formalization uh, formalizes all basic properties like uh, say mode exponents and, uh, and other things and for, for that uh, we need some non-trivial uh, the, uh, non-trivial amount of induction if we consider arithmetical theories. The second question I, I want to discuss is uh, uh, are there strengthenings of uh, the second incompleteness theorem? And what, uh, what does that mean? So we'll see. The crucial role in, in these uh, results is played by uh, what I call cuts in, in a theory. Uh, a cut is a, is a formula. Uh, exceptionally here I'm using uh, a Roman capital to denote a formula uh, and I stands for initial. So it's an initial segment uh, that is closed under successor and this says that it is an initial segment. And this condition that is closed, uh, that it contains zero and closed under successor is uh, more important than the last one because we can always close it downwards if necessary and to get something uh, similar. Uh, the investigation of, of cuts and uh, formulas of this kind uh, was initiated by Robert Solovey. Uh, this is what I know, it may have been used before, but uh, I learned it from, from Solovey. He proved that uh, if we start with the cut, uh, which is only closed under the successor, we can construct a cut that is a subcut in the sense that uh, uh, the elements that satisfy the formula J uh, also satisfy uh, the formula I in terms of uh, sets, it's a subset. Uh, but uh, J is not only closed under successor, it's also closed under addition and multiplication. Uh, this is in fact uh, not difficult to prove. Uh, to prove this, uh, we first have to construct a cut that is uh, uh, contained in I and it's closed under addition. And the basic idea is that we define J1x as, uh, let's call it the set of all elements such that we can add it to an element in the cut i and we still stay in, in the cut i. Of course, uh, zero can be added and one can be added because it's close under successor. Uh, and then it's uh, very easy to show that it's closed under addition. Once we have a cut closed under addition, then we can define a, a cut in this way, uh, in a similar fashion, except that instead of plus we use times, and it turns out that this is closed under multiplication. But one can go on and construct also a cut such that it is closed under functions that grow faster, in particular x to the log x. So this uh, grows faster than any polynomial, uh, uh, any polynomial function, uh, because in, in this uh, j we have all polynomial functions, but this is, uh, this is more. And one can go on and uh, have cuts closed under faster growing functions, but one cannot get a cut that is closed under exponentiation in general. Instead of that, one can uh, get something uh, uh, which is also very useful. One can get a cut that uh, is contained in I and uh, such that for every x in J, 2 to the x is in, in cut I. So it is not closed uh, under exponentiation, but uh, if you apply exponentiation, you, you don't get outside of i. And this is uh, also very simple. Furthermore, uh, 
given a cut in T, one can construct a cut J, uh, which is not only provably closed under addition and multiplication, but moreover, it satisfies induction for all delta zero formulas. This is uh, a non-trivial result. What is not difficult to show is that uh, for any finite set of delta zero formulas, you can get such a cut. But it's, uh, it's more tricky to get uh, a cut that is closed uh, simultaneously uh, under all delta zero formulas. And we don't know if uh, uh, delta zero induction uh, follows from uh, finitely many uh, instances of delta zero. It probably does not. Uh, these theorems, uh, as we have seen, uh, are simple. Uh, Wilkie's theorem is not that simple, but it still can be proved in a uh, weak fragment of arithmetic, namely induction for bounded formulas plus uh, an axiom, which is usually known to omega one. And it says that for every x there is y, uh, such that uh, y is equal x to the log x. Uh, this uh, looks a, a bit strange, but if you um, take logarithms, then uh, what you get is that the length of or the, the logarithm of y, which is the, the length of binary representation, is square of the length of uh, the logarithm of x, which is the uh, is square of the uh, logarithm of x, which is the square of the length of x. And we need to have uh, such an increase uh, in order to formalize constructions that are polynomial time, but not uh, linear time. So this is a, a, a very convenient axiom, but it's not very strong. Uh, so, um, Since we have these uh, interpretations, then um, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is the, the argument here? Uh, okay, so as a corollary, we, we get that um, consistency of Q and consistency of I delta zero are uh, uh, equivalent in some weak theory, in, in, in a theory in, in which we can show these theorems, uh, Wilkie's theorem and, uh, uh, and the lemmas uh, about uh, cuts closed under times and plus. Uh, so I uh, a bit uh, hesitated here because I, I guess so one should uh, use uh, the axiom omega one here. So this, so this is a, a typo. I'm not sure whether you can actually prove it in I delta zero itself. But the point is that uh, in I delta zero plus omega one, you, you can definitely show that these consistencies are, are the same because of interpretation. So here is a, a strengthening of the second incompleteness theorem. Uh, the incompleteness theorem says that it is consistent to assume that, that there is a contradiction in T, uh, that it's uh, consistent with T that there is a, a proof con of contradiction. But uh, the theorem says that uh, we can even assume that in some sense the, the contradiction is, uh, we can assume even that the contradiction is small in the sense that uh, Whenever we have a cut, then uh, the contradiction uh, is so small that it's uh, in, 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 in the cut i. Now, we have seen that we may construct various cuts. And it's consistent with any of these cuts that the, the contradiction uh, is in them. This theorem is uh, empty if we use uh, the piano arithmetic for T, because in piano arithmetic there, there are no non-trivial cuts. Induction holds for all formulas, and therefore uh, 
Uh, any formula that is closed under successor is actually uh, equivalent to x equals x. But in uh, weaker theories where we do not have uh, full induction, this uh, does make sense. But also in, in theories uh, where, uh, which are stronger than Peano arithmetic, there is some second order theories or, or uh, even set theories uh, with, with classes, uh, it, it makes sense because we can find formulas for which uh, we don't have in induction, and then this is uh, an non-trivial effect. Uh, I, I will not, not prove this, but I, I just give intuition. Uh, given a cut, uh, we can define a cut such that uh, Probably in T, it says uh, J is uh, contained in I and uh, satisfy uh, I delta zero. Uh, so um, um, this is uh, basically the, the Wilkes theorem. And then we can just say, okay, so what are the natural numbers of the theory? So why should we uh, call natural numbers all natural numbers. So why can't we just say uh, the natural numbers are those that satisfy Jx? Now, of course, we can do this, and then we can apply uh, incompleteness theorem for, for these natural numbers, and, and we get uh, the proof of contradiction that satisfy Jx. So therefore, it's consistent that uh, the ghetto number of uh, contradiction is in, in J. This is a bit informal, but uh, uh, basically this is the, the idea of, uh, of this. So now uh, what we get is that uh, for any theory T extending Q, the statement of the second incompleteness theory, uh, incompleteness theorem is meaningful. So why? Uh, why is it meaningful? The, the one is more important than, than two in the sense that uh, uh, two follows uh, obviously from one. Uh, the the reason why uh, it is even me it is meaningful to state the second incompleteness theorem for Q is that uh, in Q we can define a cut that is. Uh, closed under addition and multiplication and satisfies induction for bounded formulas and we can even get the axiom omega 1. And uh, then uh, we can show that uh, in this, uh, the, the, the proof of contradiction can be in this cut. But if the proof of contradiction is in the cut which uh, uh, interprets I delta zero or I delta zero plus omega one, then it's definitely a meaningful statement because in I delta zero plus uh, omega one, uh, we uh, can formalize things in a natural way and th they will have all, all the nice properties uh, of uh, formalization that uh, you would like to have. But therefore, it is meaningful. And it, it's also true. Uh, so one application of uh, of these uh, considerations is uh, a proof of uh, Paris and Wilkie that uh, I delta zero plus x does not prove continuity. Uh, I must admit I don't remember how, how they prove it, but uh, uh, using uh, cuts uh, it's uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so let uh, 2 sub k to the x denote k times iterated exponential function. Uh, and we have talked about this function uh, a while ago, so it's the, the same function. Uh, then uh, one can prove the following lemma, which reduces probability in I delta 0 plus exponentiation 
to provability in I delta zero of a, a modified sentence, namely a sentence saying that uh, if there is a sufficiently uh, large iteration of uh, exponential function applied to x, then uh, phi x must be true. So this is not uh, this formula. Okay. The formula is okay, it only misses the, the universal quantifier. Now, with this lemma, uh, the proof is... Uh, so, so this is not, uh, not very difficult to show. And uh, with this lemma in hand, uh, one can prove the result of uh, Harris and Wilke as follows. Uh, By the previous lemma, k times iterated, we can find a cut i in i delta zero such that uh, uh, <coughs> if uh, i x holds true, then uh, there is k times iterated exponential function of x. Uh, by the strengthening of the second independence theorem, it is consistent with i delta zero that there exists a proof of contradiction uh, x uh, such that uh, uh, i x holds true. So, uh, let's see, there's something wrong here. Uh, Okay, we want to prove that uh, delta zero plus x does not prove uh, con q. I think what you had was correct, uh, Pavel. No, no, yes. No problems. Okay, uh, okay some, something is missing here. So if, um, yes, uh, so, uh, the, the, uh, I, uh, the proof is missing a few lines. Uh, so this is correct, uh, but uh, what, does it, uh, what does it mean? Uh, well, well, because the... Um... We already uh, well, know that the consistency of Q and of I delta zero are yeah. same yeah, at this exactly. Yes, so we, we need to use the, the fact that consistency of Q is equivalent to the, the consistency of I delta zero. And then uh, we get uh, uh, the inconsistency of... Uh, well, actually not. We, we, we know that we can get the inconsistency of I delta zero in, in the cut I x. In, uh, in particular, this means that also Q is in, con it's a proof of, uh, sorry, and this is equivalent to inconsistency of Q, so we, it's in I x, but uh, then um, uh, the assumption was that uh, it was provable in exponent, uh, in I delta zero plus x, uh, but, uh, uh, um, okay. Yeah, so if uh, I delta zero plus x proves that uh, uh, that Q is consistent, and it also proves that uh, I delta zero is, is consistent, and it has to prove it using uh, a constant number of times of iterated exponential. But uh, we also can find the proof of, we uh, consistently can find a proof of uh, contradiction in Ix, which, for which uh, constant times iterated uh, exponentiation exists. 
and th this uh, leads to a contradiction that uh, this is not possible. So sorry for a bit um, confused proof, but uh, the essence is clear that um, because uh, probability in exponentiation is uh, uh, the same as probability from a sufficiently large number, and uh, we can uh, ensure the sufficiently large number not in general but uh, in in a cut in which uh, we can have a, a contradiction. All right. So now we have that I delta zero plus x does not prove uh, the consistency of Q. So what? Well, there, there may be dozens of, of such results. So why, uh, why this is uh, particularly interesting? So it's interesting for me, at least, because it shows that uh, the consistency of Q as a combinatorial principle is extremely strong because almost everything in finite combinatorics is provable in I delta zero plus exponentiation. If you consider standard uh, combinatorial results, then they, they need uh, just uh, one exponentiation or two exponentiation. And uh, in I delta zero plus x, we, we can have as many as possible. So I delta zero plus x is very strong and still uh, it doesn't can doesn't prove conq, so it's uh, unlikely that conq can be uh, presented as a simple or standard uh, combinatorial principle. But look, can I interrupt for a second? The conq, the, there's the uh, weak conq, you know, the cut-free conq. No, no, this is uh, not cut free. This is with cuts. With, with, yeah, with but, cut. but the cut free con Q, you would be able to prove. Yes, sure. Cut free, yes. Certainly. Uh, does that affect your point you're making? No, no. Uh, I'm just uh, saying that if we take con Q, where uh, probability is with cuts, then it is a very strong principle. Okay? Yeah. But uh, not only this, we, we can also prove that uh, if we take I delta zero plus omega one plus con Q, then we can prove all pi one theorems of I delta zero plus X. So by the way, uh, I don't think this is stated in our book with Hayek. It probably uh, was proved in some papers of Paris and Berkeley, but uh, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, so the conclusion is that conq is in fact stronger than all pi one theorems of i delta zero plus x. So it's a, indeed a, a very strong principle. If it is a combinatorial principle at all, maybe we shouldn't try to find a yeah. combinatorial interpretation. But uh, we, we have a combinatorial interpretation for uh, reflection principles. Very nice, but. Uh, to interpret consistency uh, itself, it's, uh, it seems to be much, much harder because uh, even for such a big theory, it's, uh, it's not clear. But, uh, but Harvey has a, uh, his approach to this and uh, I hope I, I will learn it. So uh, let me prove this uh, or give a sketch of the proof of this. So what are, uh, what are we proving? We are proving theorem that uh, I delta zero plus omega one plus consistency proves all pi one theorems of I delta zero plus X. So suppose I delta zero plus X proves uh, for all X phi X where phi X is bounded. So as we as we seen on uh, in a proof before, there exists a cut in I delta zero such that I delta zero proves uh, uh, phi x on, on the cut i. And the formula phi x holds true for all x's such that uh, uh, that satisfy i. Now. Uh, 
this is something that we can formalize in I delta zero plus omega one. So we have uh, okay, so, uh, I, I miss on uh, several places so omega one. So here, here uh, there should be also omega one. I was trying to correct it to yesterday, but I, I missed some places. So just formalizing this, we, we get that this is provable in uh, I delta zero. But I delta zero plus omega one also proves that uh, uh, I x is a cut in I delta zero. And um, Uh, since uh, since it's, it is a cut, uh, what does it mean that it is a cut? It means that uh, i zero uh, i is true for zero and is always true for the successor. So we can uh, construct a proof from the fact that uh, i is uh, a cut of the fact that uh, phi is true for every numeral x. So I delta zero plus omega one proves that for every x, if you take the numeral of x, then it is provable in I delta zero that the formula phi holds for the, for the numeral x. Uh -huh. If we assume the consistency of I delta zero, which is something that we uh, are going to use, then uh, this means that uh, also, uh, uh, it's not possible that we prove uh, that uh, formula phi x uh, is false. That uh, that I delta zero proves proof that uh, uh, phi x is false. Now, uh, what we can also do in I delta zero plus omega one, we can formalize uh, sigma completeness here. Yes. Now, uh, by, by the formalization applied to formula non phi x, uh, it's, prov it's provable in I delta zero plus omega one that if non phi x is true, then it is provable that uh, in I delta zero, that non phi uh, Holds for for the numeral x, but let's take the contrapositive of this. So this means that uh, if this is not provable, then phi x must be true. So um, if we take this contrapositive and, and, and this, then uh, combining these, we, we get that uh, i delta zero plus. Uh, on I delta zero prove that for uh, all x phi x. Uh, and now we, we used the, we only need to add the, the, the fact that uh, uh, consistency of I delta zero is equal to uh, consistency of Q because we promised to prove this for all x using only con q and not proving consistency of i delta zero. So this is a, a sketch of the proof of, of this result. So let's just uh, recall what we proved. So we proved that uh, if something is provable in i delta zero plus x, then uh, it is provable in I, I delta zero plus omega one plus consistency of Q. Now let, let me uh, turn to a uh, finite version of uh, second incompleteness theorem. Uh, Harvey Friedman proved uh, that uh, uh, if you take con t to be formula saying that there is no proof of contradiction in t of length less than x, then any proof of the sentence con t n has length uh, almost n. So here I wrote n to the 
1 minus little o of 1. But this is not important, almost n. Uh, this uh, requires some uh, explanation because uh, the theorem would be trivial if we use the wrong kind of uh, numerals. For this theorem, what we need are binary numerals, which are obtained from the binary expansion of uh, numbers. And then we use uh, uh, addition and multiplication by two uh, to find a term that uh, represents n and whose length is only logarithmic. So once the term is only logarithmic, then the, the lower bound on this uh, on, on, on the proof of this sentence is, is non-trivial because logarithm is uh, much smaller than n to the minus little of one. Furthermore, we need that the predicate is expressed by uh, sigma b1 formula. I'm not going into uh, details of what sigma b1 formula is, but uh, uh, basically we need that uh, the, the predicate of probability is uh, formalized in a natural way uh, by something that is uh, polynomial time computable. In fact, NP definition would also be okay. And uh, let me recall that we are still assuming that uh, uh, that uh, t is consistent, otherwise the theorem would be false. Uh, let me sketch the proof idea of, uh, of this result. Uh, uh, recall how we proved uh, the second incompleteness theorem. So we first had the uh, self-referential formula, the diagonal formula, based on provability. And then we uh, formalized this and, and got the second incompleteness theorem. So here we are doing uh, a sort of quantitative version of this proof. So, so we defined gamma sub n, not a single formula, but a sequence of formulas, gamma n, which say that uh, they are not provable by proofs of length m. So gamma n says, I am not provable in t by a proof of length uh, m or shorter. And then the standard uh, proof uh, the same as uh, in the first incompleteness theorem, uh, essentially gives you that, that this does not have a proof of length n. So we have just replaced the, the absolute probability by, by bounded probability, and, and this works well. Now, the, the second step, uh, which uh, was to formalize it and, and show that uh, and, and thus get uh, the second incompleteness theorem uh, is also similar here. So what we need to show is that the consistency of t up to n implies gamma, but now uh, we cannot get to gamma n in general. So we need to take m slightly smaller than, than n uh, and to m uh, of the order n to the one minus little of one would do. Uh, plus, we need uh, to know that the proof of this is uh, uh, is uh, small. So this is uh, something that we can prove. But uh, uh, if we had uh, a larger bound, it would be also okay, as small as uh, as it is uh, uh, little of of. If if uh, if it grows uh, less than any polynomial, so it's just a kind of uh, transformed proof of the second uh, incompleteness theorem that I showed you in the beginning. Now, having this, uh, we can derive some application. Uh, 
let's first prove the second incompleteness theorem. Uh, suppose t proves uh, for all x from tx, then every instance from t uh, has uh, a proof of length o of log n. Why? Because the numeral here is uh, of logarithmic length, and what you need to, to prove this would be just to take this uh, single proof that is constant length and uh, basically substitute the numeral for x or depends on what are the rules of the calculus to uh, apply the uh, general to specific term instance of this. So this is certainly not, not a big deal but it's a paradigm that, that can be used to prove uh, other theorems. In particular, uh, one can prove the strengthening of the second incompleteness theorem. So now uh, let's assume uh, that uh, p proves for all x in cut ix uh, that we have on tx. And, and take jx to be a cut in t such that t proves that uh, is contained in i and j is closed under addition and multiplication. If j is closed under addition and multiplication, then for every numeral, we can prove very quickly that uh, uh, numeral n, we can prove very quickly that uh, j holds for the numeral n, because uh, we get the uh, uh, the, the numeral by log n applications of addition and multiplication, and once we have uh, proved that uh, j is called under addition and multiplication, we, we can do this. So in this way, we, we get that uh, also uh, uh, the numeral n satisfies i. But from this, uh, we get uh, a proof of uh, uh, omega uh, a logarithmic length of proof of consistency of n as above, because we, we prove by a short proof i n, so we get uh, also con t n by a short proof, n, and this is a contradiction with uh, uh, Friedman's theorem. Uh, another application of this, not exactly of, of the bound, but uh, of uh, uh, bound to a similar concept, uh, is uh, in proving uh, in, uh, in uh, bounded arithmetic. Bounded arithmetic is a theory that is uh, a conservative extension of i delta 0 plus omega 1. Uh, and it has a very natural fragments that corresponds to complexity classes uh, as one two corresponds to n p and uh, uh, s two two corresponds to sigma p two and so on. So it's a it's a stratification of i delta zero plus omega one similar to the stratification of piano arithmetic into inductions for sigma n formulas. Uh, we would like to show that the, these fragments are distinct in the sense that uh, uh, the sets of uh, theorems are, are different, but this is a, a big open problem and it seems uh, to be uh, equally hard as uh, other problems, as uh, similar problems in complexity theory. So this seems to be uh, very difficult, but uh, uh, a natural approach to this uh, is to use the same argument as uh, one uses to separate fragments of parallel arithmetic, namely to use uh, consistency statements. But uh, we cannot use uh, the, definitely the usual consistency statements because, uh, as we have seen, uh, S2, uh, even the, the whole theory, does not prove the consistency of on Q, which is uh, uh, while well, and Q is uh, even weaker than S12. 
So the usual consistency statements do not work, definitely. Therefore, Senbus proposed to look at uh, bounded consistency. Uh, he denoted by BDCon uh, a formalization that there is no proof of contradiction that only uses bounded formulas. So this is uh, natural in this context because uh, these theories uh, uh, have induction only for bounded formulas. But unfortunately, uh, even this concept is too strong. Uh, what he proved was that there, there is at most one i uh, such that s i plus one proved a bounded consistency of s i sub two. But in fact, there is no such i, so s two doesn't prove even consistency of a uh, bounded consistency of s one two. So we cannot do any separation uh, using this. Uh, concept. So here's a, a proof idea. The idea is first to prove a, a lower bound of on the length of this bounded consistency statement. Uh, we just need a lower bound n to the epsilon epsilon uh, positive a positive constant on the length of S1 proofs of uh, bounded consistency of S12. Uh, to prove this, so one uses a similar uh, sentence as, as we used for uh, Friedman theorem, except that we replace uh, provability by bounded provability, otherwise uh, it is the same. The second thing is to, the second thing that we need is to prove that uh, uh, if we consider the, the length of proofs of uh, such sentences in S12 and uh, S2, then there is uh, practically no difference. They are only polynomially longer than S2. In fact, uh, not only for, for these sentences, but for any closed uh, bounded formulas. So, um, in this way, we get a, a lower bound on the length of proofs of uh, S2 proofs of uh, bounded uh, consistency of N. We get N to the delta lower bound on S2 proofs of bounded consistency of S12 in N. Uh, so, once again, uh, we get uh, such a bound for probability in S12, just the standard derivation, and by the second item, uh, because these are only polynomially uh, longer, uh, for S2, we also need n to the delta, delta greater or equal to zero, where delta may be uh, smaller than epsilon v. And the rest is the same as, as before. So uh, if S2 uh, uh, would prove that uh, uh, would prove the bounded consistency of S12. If it, if it proved the universal statement, then all these instances would have uh, short proofs, uh, logarithmic size proofs, which uh, they they do not have. Now, the, the last thing I, I want to discuss is uh, another strengthening of the second incompleteness theorem. Uh, so, the, the first one was using cuts. And uh, let's try uh, to something uh, weaker than cuts. Let's consider formulas that are closed uh, downwards that uh, if uh, they are satisfied for some x, then they also hold for y. So this is uh, something that is not uh, so crucial. But uh, let's replace the uh, condition that uh, it's a cut that is that, which means that uh, 
it's closed under successor by the condition that all these uh, instances for uh, for numerals are provable in T. Is it then consistent with T to assume that there is a proof of contradiction in kappa? So can we strengthen the, the theorem that we had for cut also for, for such formulas? And the answer is, uh, of course, not. Because you can just define kappa the, by saying that it's, uh, this is all, uh, all x such that uh, there is no proof of contradiction below x. If the, if the theory is uh, consistent, then uh, th there are no such proofs. And um, for uh, that there are no proofs of contradiction, uh, so for each, for each numeral, we, we get that kappa is, is true. Uh, but uh, yet, uh, that there is no proof of contradiction that satisfies kappa. In this case, uh, we don't have a proof of contradiction that uh, is satisfied by kappa, but the proof of contradiction is very close to, to this initial segment, if the segment is, is uh, uh, limited, uh, because it's just the next number after all, all the elements of kappa x. But uh, in general, uh, uh, we cannot show that uh, uh, a proof of contradiction must be close to, to kappa. Because if we define kappa uh, using some definable function in this way, we are not saying that there is no proof of contradiction below x, but below fx then uh, th there is no proof uh, even close to, to uh, the initial segment defined by, by kappa. But you see this, uh, this is not uh, uh, a bounded formula. So if one is more careful, then one can get something. And here is a theorem that, that one can prove. So assume that T is sufficiently strong in the sense that it contains psi delta zero and is consistent. And let kappa be a bounded formula and let H be any delta zero definable function that uh, goes to infinity provably in T. I believe that the theorem actually can be uh, stated in a stronger form where this is not a function, but, but a constant dependent on t. But uh, one would have to, to check it. So let's uh, just assume that it's a function going to infinity. And then suppose that uh, kappa 0, kappa 1, kappa 2 are provable in t. Uh, under these assumptions, we can then show that uh, uh, the proof of contradiction can be close to kappa in the sense that it's less than 2 to the x to the hx. So one, roughly one exponential above x. So, uh, so this is a, a, a sort of, of uh, another strengthening of uh, Gero theorem, uh, second Gero incompleteness theorem in the sense uh, that it shows that uh, it's consistent to have a small proof of, uh, of contradiction. Now, I'm not going to prove this uh, directly, uh, but, uh, uh, I, uh, but this uh, <coughs> follows from the following wow. theorem that uh, Jan Krajicek and myself proved uh, and it improves uh, results that started with uh, Paris and Dimitrakopoulos, uh, Hayek and Soloway. 
So Hayek proved a triple exponential bound and Soloway proved a double exponential bound and then we proved a single exponential bound. And the theorem says that uh, it, it's a theorem about uh, models of, uh, of theories. So we again assume that T is uh, sufficient strong, <coughs> excuse me, sufficient strong theorem in the sense uh, above. Uh, and M is uh, a non standard. Uh, and so, so what's missing is that it's, uh, it's a countable non-standard model of T. Then there exists a, a countable model of T such that uh, it's uh, equal to M on the segment 0 up to A. And then it possibly deviates in, in such a way that uh, uh, in N there is a, a proof of contradiction in T, uh, which is uh, as uh, whose greater number is less than 2 to the A to the H. So now I should uh, say that uh, we are now not talking about the length of proof, but about uh, greater numbers. Uh, but in, in terms of length, uh, it is stated uh, using length of proof, it, it would also be an exponential uh, exponential bound. So, so this looks uh, definitely similar. So, <clears throat> how do we prove the, the previous theorem? So, let's look at the previous uh, theorem. So we need to show that uh, it's consistent uh, with T, that, uh, that there is a proof. Uh, uh, but uh, how to prove the consistency? Well, just uh, take a suitable model. And this theorem gives us uh, a model. We, we just need to set, uh, uh, set uh, uh, kappa and uh, set um, H and uh, A suitably. Uh, I will make a, a simplifying assumption a simplifying assumption that uh, in kappa all the bounds uh, in the bounded quantifiers are uh, by X. Uh, so let's let, let's let's take uh, M a non-standard model, countable again, um, model of T. Uh, by overspill, that there is a non-standard number A such that uh, <coughs> uh, satisfies kappa in the model A. So we we use the the assumption that uh, kappa is true for all standard numbers in this way. Uh, in <coughs> that uh, we get that it's uh, true for standard numbers and by overspill that it's a non-standard number. And this uh, non-standard H will be just H of A, where H uh, is this uh, possibly slowly increasing function, but since it goes to infinity, it means that if A is uh, non-standard, then H must also be non-standard, so we can apply the theorem above. And we get a model N. And uh, what uh, only remains to note is that <coughs> in N, A satisfies kappa. And this is because uh, it's a bounded formula where the quantifiers are, uh, are bounded by, by X. So if uh, these initial segments are are, are the same and it's, it's the formula of this kind and then we have kappa A. So we have in N kappa A and uh, the proof of contradiction less than 2 to the A to the H A. So this is, uh, this is all I, I wanted to say and uh, if uh, you like some open problem then uh, what is uh, still open is uh, uh, what is the, the best possible bound 
in, in this theorem. Uh, so is it possible to reduce it to a polynomial bound or anything less than exponential? Uh, th there are some consideration in uh, our paper uh, in, in which we prove the, the model theoretical uh, result about the optimality of this bound, but uh, we definitely don't know. Uh, so it would be good to revisit it and uh, either improve it or, or show that uh, it's not possible to improve it uh, without uh, uh, making some breakthrough in the uh, uh, in computational complexity theory. So at the end, uh, I have some references. Thank you.